oh john there's so many things i'm excited to talk about um like what what am i not excited to talk about like the state of the game is in such a great place um i'm so, I'm so happy we are where we are like i uh uh but man has it ever been it's never been more fun so Well, uh, you may have seen his articles on uh, Frontline Gaming, uh, where he's the mastermind behind 40K Simulation Center, or you may have just seen him when you've read somebody's bad opinion on Facebook. Uh, tonight, <laughs> we're pleased to welcome uh, Don Meyer. I'm going to have a weird take. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, chat, go ahead and let us know what that music is, because uh, Lord Val, again, didn't, didn't let us know what that one is, too. But I'm sure it was amazing uh, in quality. One could hope. Dent, welcome. Uh, excited to have you here. Uh, Dent, I have a question. You write kind of the simulation series, uh, center mm -hmm. series of articles for Frontline Gaming. The, I tried to do the shock attack gun for Vale, and it broke me. There was so much variability. I could, it was hard to check myself <laughs> and whether I was doing anything right. It was brutal. <laughs> I had to take a hiatus after that. <laughs> I'm wonderful that Val to this day continues to break people until they're forced to take a hiatus. And now it's superstar producer and creative director of the largest independent 40k media network, Valerie Heffelfinger. Uh, Val putting out on Facebook. Dad, Daddy, what's he, what's he putting out here? Uh, it looks like he's trying to get um, some terrain for Warhammer Fantasy Battle that would be suitable for that. Well, we have kind of some examples. If you guys have fantasy terrain uh, that you're sitting on and realizing that this game will never come back, uh, and this just the, the <laughs> WAP is a terrible thing. So what he's looking for is like this classic Warhammer Hill, maybe some classic babbling brooks. Um, and of course, he wants a classic Warhammer Fantasy graveyard, which is ironically where the game's been consigned to. Guess, Dan, have you ever lowered yourself to playing fantasy? No. No? Good man. <laughs> Though somehow Vale's uh, little uh, Facebook streams have popped into all my Facebook reels lately. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Dan, you, uh, Danny, you looked uh, upset that I, I said that he lowered himself to play a game of rank. And you fun. know, I think Dan might be a little square curious, but, you know, that could just be... <laughs> that could just be... <laughs> <laughs> there, there was always something in my my forty five degree line of sight. I don't know, man. Like, look, the point is the point that I'm trying to make here, John, is that uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I hate it when you disparage uh, what is clearly the best game ever made. Yeah, um, nothing says best game ever made like being outsold by a paint line. John's facts really don't care about my feelings, and that's that's hard sometimes. My facts aren't here to care about me. You killed my jokes. Uh, I killed your game. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> Jeez, all right, man. <laughs> In the grainiest possible way, with the lowest resolution image I could possibly find, uh, we received this, uh, which, uh, warning, Seth Charles Oster, <laughs> Seth sent a photo. Oh, no. That's never a good sign to see. Uh, which was just... <laughs> Six pictures of Vanguard Tactics owner and former actual model Stephen Box uh, looking like he hasn't drank water for a week and a half. Um, now, Danny, why would someone send this to, without context? If I had to speculate, and I will here, absolutely. Perfect. Um, I'd say, I'd say uh, it has to do with a man who really hates himself on the inside, deeply, uh, unequivocally, uh, like an unemotional hate, just a general disdain for their body. And the bodies of people who uh, clearly work out a lot and spend a lot of time on it. Now, Vanguard Tactics, of course, is a phenomenal coaching service. You can help improve your game. And they do run classes at several frontline events, including the Bay Area Open, um, in order to help you maximize your playing ability. But these pictures do explain the ad Vanguard had rejected by frontline events manager Kicker for uh, Las Vegas Open this year, uh, which is this was their ad. <laughs> there we go. Just a bunch <laughs> of muscular bros being right up on a roof. Uh, above all of you and your bad opinions. Yeah, uh, Seth Dan, one superimposed his face on top of those men's bodies. We do have the face. I just, you couldn't see it because it was too small. Uh, the face. Well, like, Danny, so for, like, uh, coaching, do you view kind of, like, 40K coaching any different, like, tennis coaching or golf coaching or, like, 
vocal coaching. How do I think that 40K coaching compares to those different services? Yeah, do you think it's something similar? Yeah, the name, it's in the name, John, it's coaching. It's all coaching. What do you want me to say to that? Like probably like 30 to 90 seconds of a informed response that not only answers the question, but builds up both of our ethos as hosts of this show. Goonhammer has made it rain, and Peter the Falcon can finally afford the classic Murder, She Wrote Blu-ray collection he's been after, uh, as 40kstats.com and the ITC Battle Hats have been absorbed by the Goon Collective. Uh, Dan, as a stats man yourself, uh, how do you view this sort of like centralization of data? I'm going to be able to have a job soon. Uh, and Danny, what is your sort of take on this kind of Goonhammer, kind of infinity jamming? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for Peter uh, to, a, to a degree. Not entirely happy. I don't know if he deserves all of my happiness. I'm not happy anymore because he's sitting here in Twitch chat right now pretending that he didn't know about it. So that... <laughs> right. <I'm... laughs> but, you know, you really hate to see big goon step in and, and swallow another small up-and-coming company and, you know, kind of just keep on rolling here everything's going to be goon something by the end of uh, by the end of the year you know that that's true they're just swallowing it up what do you see kind of goonhammer kind of expanding beyond this uh just like these two acquisitions or is this sort of like the start of something you know or or is this yeah Yeah. i mean this is a situation where we're you know we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens um, but no, I wouldn't be surprised if they own every single uh, 40k media uh, source by you know major one by the end of you know in the next two years. Uh, we can only assume that this is not the last purchase by the collective, with signs that they have bought spiky bits. Um, after I saw this uh, Facebook article, which had this very reserved headline. Five mostly okay-ish reasons to play the new Horus Heresy, which is an extremely reserved clickbaity title. So really, we're seeing kind of that influence spread through uh, throughout. Uh, terrible news. Uh, Games Workshop is going out of business, uh, according to one commentator on Facebook. Um, <sighs> who says, hey, is GW still closing? What was the final say on that? Uh, which, you know, I get all my business news from Facebook. Uh, Danny, take us through the insanity I pulled from the comment section uh, on this guy here. Like this, this would be the comment that I pulled up. Uh, so take us through this. Okay. Yep, stock price crashed after the financial abuse of fan base was exposed by this group. The consistent hard work of those brave souls who complain relentlessly (laughs) about the price of the plastic dollies finally worked. Thoughts and prayers to those brave heroes. (laughs) Pretty solid. Pretty solid. Man, I do love me some sarcasm. Yeah, Yeah. they're not going out of business. Uh, What do you even take about? I mean, Dan, do you even agree that the internet would have the power to just, like, fully destroy GW? Oh, no. (laughs) No. Too much money, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, and like, I even pulled up here, like they're saying, oh, the stock price is tanking. But I did research, guys. I didn't just pull memes. I pulled this. This is the last five years of the stock price of GW, which yeah, it's going down, but it's still higher than it's been since 2020. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, the stock is, yeah, Dan. If GW can survive sixth and seventh edition, they're doing just fine. That's fair. I will say though. The real reason uh, GW's stock price was fluctuating so much was pointed out th- this very morning to the point where I had to edit notes for this show, uh, which I very rarely do. But the real answer, goblins. Uh, this person showed us in this graph that the stock price has always been tied to the quality of goblin releases. Uh, only goblins. Uh, so we, we see with the release of the Gloomspire Gits, uh, the stock started going up in 2020. And then the Snotling Pump Wagon had a real big bullish effect, m- putting it up here. I'm going to use wrong financial terms a lot here for this next couple of minutes. Yeah, uh, but however, the Hobgoblins coming out in 2021 uh, with the New Age of Sigmar just caused it to tank. They weren't cool goblins. And looking at the chat here, uh, worst way someone has warped statistics listening to John talk about his win rate. I never lie about how much Ooh. I lose. I've never tried to distort that statistic. It's I'm an open book. Look me up in the ITC battles. Uh, if Goonhammer let you. Who knows? Uh, 
<laughs> maybe maybe you'll need Goon Plus for that. Um, all I all I know is that they couldn't even afford GW is in such financial dire straits that they couldn't even afford to pay for a bun for Mike Brent's hot dog. Uh, guys, this is legitimately my favorite image uh, I've ever shared on the internet. Uh, look at how happy that man is staring at that hot dog. I think there's ketchup on there, possibly. Maybe he's blowing it a little bit to cool it. But I've never seen someone more content yeah. uh, than, than that hot dog eating. Uh, he's holding it very gingerly. He is. Yeah, he is very gingerly. And if, guys, if you're only listening to the audio, you're robbing yourself. Uh, find you someone who looks at you the way Mike Bryant looks yeah, at, looks at you the know, naked He's hot dog. gently pulling back that napkin to expose the, the gorgeous <laughs> hot dog flesh. <laughs> he, he's just lightly blowing, a sensual blow yeah. onto, uh, onto his food to cool it down because right now it's just too hot to eat. <laughs> also, I want to I wanna, I wanna think um, that someone went up to him and was like, Hey man, when are you gonna like reduce the power level on these tyranids? And he's just like, Man, I love a good hot dog. It's just covered in ketchup and just it's real tasty. The chat, yeah, I'm well aware there's a bun in the background of the picture, but that ruins the joke. And you're that's Danny's role, not Twitch Chat's role. Please stop trying to take Danny's job. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, uh Danny. We're going to move on here to this next picture we're going to look at. Uh, it's a little one that caught my eye. I feel it in my very soul. Uh, it's a little thing. is how I view myself when the boys are coming to play 40K. I'm a badass. We're going to play war games. We're going to have these other things. Uh, however, my wife views it as uh, me just playing with my stupid little space dollies. That was a little callback to the earlier thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan, Dan, how does your significant other uh, view your Warhammer time? I mean, or even just kind of your... Uh, your, your kind of work with frontline doing like this, uh, the simulation center. Uh, uh <laughs> well, it's better than real drugs. <laughs> I will say for a space, uh, constraint, uh, Warhammer fills my house. I feel if I was addicted to some kind of narcotics, I would have literally nothing in my house to the point I probably wouldn't have a house. Uh, so I wouldn't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Uh, Danny, how does, how does your wife, uh, react to your Warhammer? How does she describe it to her, her friends who might not know? Well, John, uh, my wife gets frustrated with me is if it's if it goes into a couple of the different rooms of the house, if it makes it into those rooms, there's an issue and like I need to clean it up. So, um, yeah, like once it makes it in the bathroom, she gets kind of frustrated, like and then like <laughs> I was going to say one of my favorite memories of, of visiting your place was I went to the bathroom and when I turned around, there was just like. I start collecting box <laughs> or like something just like right there. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess if you're going to have the time, it's more productive than the other. You know, thing. I'm just trying to entice new people to the hobby, John. And I just put things there. So it'll attract their attention. You know, the yep. key to selling something is to get somebody's hands on it. Please keep Danny on screen, Val. As I let you know, this person's opinion, uh, cause I, I want to see their wonderful reaction. Right. Ready? Go. But it's only normal because we've accepted it. You yourself have accepted it. If you're playing with plastic dolls, that's fine. I am painstakingly reproducing a replica of a particular unit that I am paying homage to with my time and effort. We aren't playing with dolls so much as we are honoring the sacrifice that real folks make during real war and emulating the duty and effort that actual warfare requires. I'm a historicals guy. I know. Oh, I bet not. you're shocked, right? I know. <laughs> as well as a 40K guy. But sure, if you want to degrade the effort that people put into their hobbies, and then you could be that negative. But shaming folks for their passion is just disgusting. And when you call them plastic dolls, unless they are, in fact, plastic dolls, which th they are. I mean, that's they're literally made of plastic. Um, unless <laughs> you shame your fellow players... Sports are just games too, but we hold ball players up as heroes. Why so if it's just a game? <laughs> I think, uh, Danny, we're going to ask for your response here, but uh, our buddy Josh in, in the Twitch chat, welcome, Hanko, is uh, summed it up best with dismissive wanking gesture. Uh, but Danny. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. That was good. Thank you, Josh. I love you a lot. 
Uh, Danny, can please respond uh, to this uh, this amazing comment. I mean, John, it's such a bad comment. I I, I don't even know where to start with this thing. Like. <laughs> Why do you why do you have to take this so seriously that you're mad on other people's behalf? You're not mad at on other people's behalves. You just want you just don't want to feel embarrassed because you're literally playing with toys and you hadn't really realized that until someone brought it up to you. So like <laughs> I just think you you just suck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, stop that. Hey, so Dan, have you ever played someone who's taking it like far too seriously? Where you're like, well, let's let's just relax with our space dolls, dude. Isn't that every Imperial Guard player? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's well, a yeah. good call out. I think it's important that they hear this, Dan. That is the simulation center, as you ask them a million times, you know, what they're running for Astro Militarum, and like seven hundred thousand times they cry about you using the wrong name. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it's okay. They can shoot all those last guns and you know what? Nothing will still happen. <laughs> <laughs> but was there any sort of like specific game you can think of where you're like, oh man, this is this is gonna be a slog. Oh I guess every time I play night, <laughs> it's always <laughs> a slog. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Danny, uh, I have my special one close to my heart. Do you have a game where you're like, man, you're taking this way too seriously? Yeah. So this one time, um, I'm I uh, I partake in some libations in the parking lot outside of the game store. Really excited to play my next game, and then I find out that I'm playing against this guy who's kind of got a reputation locally um, of just being a giant jerk. So I I step up to the table. He steps up to the table. Like, he's saying all of these awful things about my mother, like, right off the bat. And, uh, like, I'm just I'm just in shock. Like, he calls me all these names. He says all this racist stuff. Like, not only about me and my heritage, but also about Americans in general. The judge came by and had to be like, dude, you need to calm down. And, like, I'm not, I'm not innocent here. I was throwing some stuff back because, I mean, everybody knows Scottish people are just terrible people. <laughs> One. So, <laughs> <laughs> there was one. There was no racism. Two. I enjoy libations in the parking lot with you prior to the game. And then, didn't you start the game where like, all right, let's f and go so I can beat you or something like that? Like that was your intro line. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Look, but the point I think is, you even it's... said something like when I asked you, like, "Hey, what do you want to know about my army?" I think your response was, "I don't care what it does. I'm just going to kill you." <laughs> Look, man. Um, you know, I think that you probably took some things out of context um, that aren't necessarily there, and like, I really don't appreciate you bullying me again. The judge did come over because we did come in, <laughs> agreeing to just yell at each other and insult yeah, we did each yell at each other the for the time. first fifteen minutes. It was pretty great. Yeah, anyway. it, it was. It was pretty great. Yeah, and I did. I did have uh, someone yell at me. Uh, that was thing. Oh, we have there. Oh, oh <laughs> nice. Well done, gents. Yeah. All right, we can pack it in. Um, Tyler, I can't see this. Some sixty-nine. <laughs> like, oh heck yeah, cool. Yeah. Show's yeah. over. We reached sixty-nine, uh, <laughs> guys. It's been forty-eight wonderful weeks. Yeah. The entire thing was just to get to sixty-nine live viewers. <laughs> I've been looking for a template for the Knights Emperor and Chaos Knights to scratch build my own. I do not have a 3D printer. GW is price gouging us. I have seen the pictures on forums of people making Titans out of PVC pipes, foam core, and bits from bits boxes. Douse anybody know... <laughs> <laughs> where I can get a template so I can print it out. So wait. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lot to unpack here, John. Yeah. Does this guy have a printer or does he not have a 3D printer? Like, I think it's really important. He wants to print it out, but he says he doesn't have one. This brings up a super important thing for me. and something I was thinking about this week. I have a, a friend who, who talks a lot about Magic the Gathering. Um... Do the Magic the Gathering players know that they don't have to pay hundreds of dollars for a card because paper printers exist 
and they can merely print their own. Like, how is Wizards of the Coast not bankrupt from the existence of printers? Fair question. <laughs> I have no, I have no, I have no, <laughs> everything you just said has totally owned me. Yeah, I mean, I, I try. Um, but yeah, from the looks of it here, he doesn't have a 3D printer. He has what would be described as maybe a 2D printer. Uh, oh, where he's, I see. So he's, he's going to like print the panels? One, one slice at a time. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's going to put, well, <laughs> He's going to print 6,000 layers. <laughs> it's going to be his own 3D printer. He's going to build it up. He's just add things that... 500 sheets of paper together, and like each one of them has like a little template to cut out around. Perfect. Any printer is a 3D printer if you have no life. Uh, <laughs> that's the important thing to take away. I'm saying, I think he's looking to print things out and maybe a card stock i wouldn't say like a really thick card stock he's trying to save money uh, and then maybe making like a foam core shape out of it and kind of building stuff that way um then what does it mean a lot of people talk about the pricing of this luxury hobby um but what are your thoughts about like current gw prices <laughs> Well, first, I want to take us back to a second. I have to imagine that this guy could also get balloon animals and paper mache them. Oh, <laughs> my get so tight. Like, if you do, like, a little mini one, and you could use them as, like, flesh hounds. Like, now I want a circus-themed corn army. We have, like, balloon animal flesh hounds. You could have, like, just, like, big clown bloodthirsters. Clown thirsters, even. So I think that's something different. <laughs> hey, Paul Williams. Um, but, yeah, the but... prices are... Uh... Well, they're definitely only going higher, but so is everything else in the world. So I guess at this point, YOLO, <laughs> I'll find a way to, to, to make it, uh, to get all the models I still want. But yeah, I don't know what to say. It's a luxury hobby. You don't have to play. It, totally. And, and Danny, this wine was, was uh, directly about knights and knight kits in general. And while I'll say that my knight army that I purchased is the cheapest army I've bought in years. Uh, yeah. Um, what are your kind of thoughts about being uh, the current pricing structure of GW and kind of where it's we're like at? The cheapest the army point for point to play like is knights, right? Yeah, like <laughs> better custodes. Yeah, uh, so you're losing me here. I I don't know, and like I, <laughs> what I really want to see is this knight that's made of this PVC pipe. And is he, is he talking about knights? I mean, he talks about. What was it? Is it Emperor's Titans? <laughs> I think they mean Imperial, uh, like Imperial Knights. Yeah, Knights Emperor. Thank you. I'm thinking uh, from this post, uh, which you can see I, I laugh reacted in support. Um, but from this post, I don't believe English is his first language. Are the Knights... <laughs> Are the Knights Emperor like the ones you get from Wish? <laughs> like, is, is that <laughs> is that what those are? I don't know. Speaking of things you're going to be able to order on Wish, um, there are these guys here. I'm personally horrified at this Knight Army, which a lot of people seem to like. But if you guys look at it there, um, that is a Knight Army made entirely of sprues and bits. Amazing. Uh, well, is it though? Yeah. John, I think it's uh, beautiful. D Danny, why? What, what's your thoughts on this army? Tell, tell me. Do you have any close-ups of these knights? Let's see if, like, uh, producer Val can do the enhance meme. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, our technology is restrained by the, in the same ways that all technology is. Oh, I really like that one's base is just a hot coast, like a hot pad thing for like a uh, like a pot on the counter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I too like good, just in case it gets too hot. Is that a suction cup to the left? <laughs> oh, yes. guys, we're getting like <laughs> maybe we're or getting FLGN streaming quality like, visuals right now with like circles and arrows and stuff like that. Now, some of these have bases, though. <laughs> Do they though? That's not really a base. That seems to be like someone found something on the ground. And now, the suction cup that. is an interesting idea for bases, don't you think? Yeah, like remove your knight. I destroyed it. I can't. It's attached to the. We're table gonna have to wait until the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for model transportation, you don't even need magnets. You can just slap them onto something. Good to go. It'll be just like your shower. They'll just randomly fall one day. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> not while in transit. 
Dan, Dan, what's your take on these sprue knights? Do you think they're they're like unique enough and different enough that you can actually tell what they are? Apart no. from genuinely a hundred percent GW parts. I mean, as long as it has the little copyright logo, I mean, that would definitely make it fully GW. But you have to check every bit for that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's better than the the, the sprue Necron army for sure here. Um, oh, but <laughs> what? It, tell me, have you seen any like super terrible conversions uh, where you're like, mm, oh, is God. that really that though? I, I've seen some droopy Imperial Guard uh, cannons on Lehman Russes over the years. <laughs> Dude, droopy? Not, like, yeah, like not like it should be a nice, you know, straight plasma cannon, and it's it's just flaccid. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> well, think, you. I don't you think make the joke. When I think of Lehman Russ. I think rock hard, iron. Yeah. I was going to go with the joke with, you know, after so many years of service, then you can't oh, have a rigid cannon yeah. anymore. You I mean, know, that's good. where I was going with that. Guys, yeah. John's just made what's called an erectile dysfunction joke. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, now you see why I put the Steinfeld memes in so I can direct his over-explaining. Otherwise, it comes out just bizarre but times where <laughs> it helps make unfunny jokes even unfunnier in my <laughs> Um, John, you know I've seen a pretty I've seen a pretty poorly converted army that was you know kind of a similar vein to this before. What was that? Yeah, so it was a forest spirit army, and all of them were made with pipe cleaners. Uh, What? Oh, interesting. Like they made the dryads out of pipe cleaners that were like wrapped around. That's almost as bad as the cereal brimstones. Yeah. Oh, the marshmallows. Yeah. And and then I saw another (laughs) army, John, that was just sprues that were cut apart. And they were stuck together to make like shapes of people, and those were used as uh, necrons. Mm, it, was yeah, that was... it looked terrible. Like, who wants to just play against a bunch of sprues? Like, and then Gravy Jones, you cannot super chat, but please just let us know what you're saying. We'll, we'll throw it in here. Um, I will say though, this Imperial Knight Army or this Chaos Knight Army, I should say, who even knows what they are, has far overtaken uh, the. <laughs> The quality of the the uh, Necron army is the go-to sprue army. Uh, and what is this we're being shown here? Is this is this the the sprue Necrons? Enhance. I, I think that's enhance. Enhance. Be pipe cleaners, John. Oh, that's beautiful. That's Are those big horse. Yeah. Look, and then do you see the keeper of the, secrets there on the right hand side? I am more like the Fantastic. great unclean one at the top left. Uh, that thing is beautiful. The, I'm yeah, the bloodthirster's head is really weird, though. I think. Oh, that could be a great unclean one, though. I don't know. Oh, there's the bloodthirster. Look at his wings, mm. <laughs> guys. Please, I, I want to see uh, your homemade crafts. I want to see your paper craft uh, models. Your, your pipe cleaner models. Your spaghetti and, and, and PVA glue. We're all we're mostly parents here. Uh, like we, we all know these things. Um, question: Do you get ten points for being fully painted? Oh, sorry. Do you get ten points for being fully painted for a pipe cleaner army? Is philosophical debate here? Uh, that's not a word. That's okay. But is pre-painted fully painted? Ooh, I know what you're saying. I know what you're throwing down. Yes. Good. I think I think if we're shilling out here, I mean, it should count for uh, if you like buying FLG terrain, right? Yeah, Even there you go. Perfect. We're, we're, we're really, really getting that together. practice in for the show. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Wonderful. 